Hi there, I'm Miriam and welcome to Miriam's Manor. You guys, I am so excited to bring to you today my build for my bed and breakfast. I had designed this layout almost a year ago now and I finally have it completed and I absolutely love the way that it turned out. A lot of the elements within this I actually hand made. Some of the things that you're going to see towards the end like the spiral topiaries, the triangular shaped boxwood hedges, the pergola, all of those elements I handmade. Some of them I did do videos to show you guys how to make those already. But before I show the video on this build, I just want to remind you guys that you only have a few more days left to submit your Christmas Village contest entries. The submission deadline date is December 1st. If you are unaware of the contest because you are just finding me for the first time today, I will link that video in the description box of this video. You can check that out. If you've already started your village, perfect timing. You can wrap it up and then send me an email with your contest entry. So I will go ahead and start the video, check it out and let me know what you think. To begin this project, I have pre-cut four boards. Now, the first three that I am using for the base is the white insulation foam, and this top layer that I am doing is the pink XPF foam. The reason I am putting this on top is because I am going to carve a walkway into this platform, and it is much easier and prettier and neater to carve into this foam than the pink, so I'm going to top this with the nicer foam, um, but I definitely will be using this side of it. Also, oh my goodness, you guys, I use this knife to cut these boards. I got this not too long ago from Hot Wire Foam Factory. I'm gonna put the name and the item number of this down below, but this thing is fan fantastic it is such a thick and durable blade it cuts my cutting time in like it's seconds to cut through even this thick pink foam board so um, i am going to show you guys some video at some point of me actually using this tool in action so you can see how it works so now i am going to take my foam fusion from hot wire foam factory glue all of these boards together let them sit overnight and then I am going to get to work on it first thing in the morning. Aaliyah wanted to help me today with my project. That's good, baby girl. Thanks. All right, so everything is all glued down, all four layers. I have my weights on it to press each board in place. You guys really make sure that you don't skip this process and that you especially apply things at the edges because if these seams can dry together and uh, be without any um, gaps in it, it actually gives you a nicer finish. When you're carving into it, you won't see any of those larger gaps. So that's just a little quick tip for you there. So, I'm going to let this sit for 12 hours and then I am going to carve it up in the morning. All right guys, so my foam board pieces that I glued together are all dry. I did cut another one up top to elevate my bed and breakfast just a little bit further. I am going to create a set of stairs here to access this point. And I also created this space here. So this is going to be a walk path here, which is going to split off in this circular section here that you will see all of this is walk path. And then I will have this little guy, this fountain in the center, and then there will be a flower bed around this. These walk paths will lead off to the side with what is coming next on either end. So um, I am going to now begin to carve out my cobblestone pathway within these borders. 
Here is what the pathway looks like so far. Now I am going to show you guys how I carved this in just a second. When I actually was shooting this part of it, I did not hit record and I thought I did, but I do still have footage of when I did the other side. So I will play that for you now. To carve this cobblestone pathway, I am using my hot knife from Hot Wire Foam Factory. And this is the three inch hot knife. The three inch hot knife does get a little bit hotter than the rest of them. I love, love, love using this tool to create my pathways. As you can see, the tip of this blade is extremely fine, which allows me to make pathways without very large gaps between each stone. So also, as you can see, I am just creating random shapes as I'm making this cobblestone. Each one is going to be a little bit different in shape and size. And that is how I like to create my cobblestone because typically um, no two stones are alike in the traditional cobblestone roads and pathways. So that is the look that I try to imitate when I am carving and creating this. All right, so I have come outside on my back patio to carve into this styrofoam. The tool that I am using here is the sculpting tool from Hot Wire Foam Factory, and this is what I've been using to create my ridges and formations in the sides of my platforms for this particular village this year. This is a super simple and easy process without adding rocks to have them protrude from the actual platforms. This way I'm just carving into it and they're indented a little bit into the actual surface, but it does cut my prep time down doing it this way. And this is just the look that I actually wanted for this year's village. So I am keeping all of my pieces that you will see me make this year consistent with this particular style. Now, to carve this look, all I'm doing is putting the blade in and waving the blade underneath the surface of the styrofoam to create this shape. And I am waving it in an S-like pattern. I am also making sure to go through all of the layers of styrofoam at the same time so you don't see any breaks between each layer. All right, so now it is time for me to start my black wash. I've got quite a bit of paint in this cup. I am going to add water to it, and I am doing about a 70-30 mix, 70% paint, 30% water. I'm going to mix it thoroughly and then paint all of my cobblestone as well as the front of my piece here. So this is the consistency that I go for. I want it to drip off of my brush like this and then I know it's the perfect consistency and I'm ready to paint. Now one thing to also keep in mind when you have paths that you have carved, I am pushing my brush quite a bit into the surface of this base. I want to make sure that all of my bristles can make it into those cracks and the cracks can be saturated with color. That way, when I go to add my layers of paint, you can still see those individual lines of each stone. I am treating the sides the exact same way with the black wash. I am making sure to push my paint into every crack and crevice that is in the front of this platform so that there are no pink or white spots showing through when it is time for me to add my layers of paint. Okay, so we're going to take our leftover black wash in our cup, add some white to it, and mix it up to create our first layer of gray. To paint this, I have removed all of the excess paint off of my brush and I just have the tip of my brush wet and I am just making some like X-like patterns across the front of this piece and lightly brushing on the paint in layers. I know that you can still see a lot of the black showing through, but as I continue to add each layer of paint, more of that black will be covered and they will end up just looking like shadowy crevices within the rocks. 
To paint the cobblestone on this, I am using even less paint on my brush. And I am just gently tapping the surface. And this same principle applies to this, you guys. Each additional layer of paint that I add, it will cover more and more of the black that's showing through. And now I am taking the existing leftover gray that I had from my first coat, adding a little bit of white paint to that to make my second coat. And I am going to apply this in the exact same way. So in order to remain consistent with the other builds that I did already this year, I'm going to add a little bit of this nutmeg, nutmeg brown. And I am just going to add this sporadically throughout the build, not all over, just here and there in certain spots. Also FYI on this, I do not clean my brush between this because I want that gray in the bristles to mix a tiny bit with the brown because it creates this beautiful like brownish grayish color that I just love. All right, guys, so this is the foundation of this build. You can see it's really elevated here. I will have stairs that I will put here. They just won't fit right now on this table. And then right here, there will also be a set of stairs. But I am going to go ahead and start decorating. And I will be right back for the reveal.
So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today and watching me put together this bed and breakfast scene from my 2022 Christmas Village. I so enjoy everything about this build. I love the way the grounds turned out. I love the formal garden spaces in it. So I love that I can be able to share that passion, put it into a craft and share it with you guys. So if you like the video, please give me a big thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. Also, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. You can also become a member of my channel by clicking on the link in the description box of this video. It will take you to the tab to join and then you can enter at the level you feel comfortable with. If you guys have any questions for me, as always, please leave me a line in the comment section. I will get back with you. And until I see you again, stay safe, God bless you, and I will see you soon. Bye.